Hello, I'm Ian Newman. I'm a Blue Badge tour guide for the southwest of England. I'm out on my daily isolation, social distancing, responsible walk, my one a day. Uh, some of us are luckier than others in what they have on their doorstep. So uh, I thought I might take you with me and maybe we'll stop and look at a few interesting things on the way along. So uh, let's go. So we've just come out of the woods and into our first sweep of open downland. We're looking at Middleton Farm. And Middleton Farm is what remains of a medieval village which disappeared in 1348, would you believe it? Which was uh, probably our most famous pandemic, the Black Death. So anyway, we'll move on up the hill now. You don't want to hear me heavy breathing, so uh, I'll fade in again when I've managed to get to the top. So we're on Middle Hill, uh, above Middleton. And if you look as I pan round, you've got a series of parallel banks. These are medieval farming strips that were abandoned in the 1300s. But they are managed beautifully. They've never seen an agrochemical and they're full of many species of orchids when we get to the summer. So onwards and upwards. And as we get to the top of Middle Hill, always worth looking back and having a look across to Scratchbury Hill. You can see there's a burial, burial mound on the top and you can also see that there are two parallel banks of an Iron Age hill fort. So from about 1200 BC onwards, the Iron Age 1200 BC until the Romans came. And then we became Romano-British. So Scratchbury Hill, those battlements are a mile around. And back in the day, they wouldn't have had grass on them. They'd have been beautiful white chalk with a six foot stockade fence on top of them. And if you were climbing up that steep hill to get there, they'd look pretty daunting, especially with people throwing things at you on your way up. So on the top of Middle Hill, a fantastic Bronze Age burial mound. Uh, and as, as you panorama, pan around towards the live firing area, because on the edge of the MOD land, have a look there, yet more wonderful examples of the strip lynchets, the medieval farming strips. And as we come around further, lovely white chalky soil, you get a beautiful view of Battlesbury Hill, another hill fort, Iron Age hill fort, with more strip farming strips in front of it. And in fact, Battlesbury Hill, the battlements on here are a mile and a half round and there are destination for today's walk and then turn around and go back a slightly different way. So if you were intent on taking this place, by the time you've got here, you can see a very small, on the top, you can see a little figure. It gives you a scale of the, an idea of the scale of the hill. And given that there be six foot fences on top of the top two layers, your mouth would be getting a bit dry now and you decide, you might even decide, do you know what? It wasn't a great idea. But anyway, I've got to go up to the top because I've got to show you the view from the top. So I've reached the top of the hill. Some people ask, why do you climb hills? I suppose answer number two, is because it's there, that old chestnut. Answer number three is because my Apple Watch tells me that I haven't closed the exercise ring. But I'll show you reason number one. Reason number one, the panorama from the top of Battlesbury Hill. And as we come round to Middle Hill, Look at that fantastic set of cultivation terraces from the 1300s. Carry on 
round. Okay, that, that's the Bronze Age tumulus in the trees that we saw. And then there's Scratchbury Hill, which we looked at from Middle Hill. And then we look into the Wiley Valley across to the Great Ridge, which has a Roman road running along it that goes from Bath to Wilton. So that's why we do it. And when I get tired of that view, I'll be tired of life. So uh, I'm going to go back now. I've got four hills to cross before I get home. Lucky me. Uh, we won't be going back quite the same way, so there's still a few more things to show you. So I've had my statutory two minute rest, so let's go. Going back over Middle Hill again, but round the lip, and we're looking across to Clay Hill in the upper Wiley Valley. And then we're coming round to the hill with all the trees on the top, like a Mo Mohican haircut. It's known as the Cop Heap, which is above Warminster. Last big climb of the day, up to Scratchbury Hill, and I'll see you at the top. Just a perspective on the uh, terraces I showed you on the way up. And just to let you know that uh, if you like this kind of landscape, the whole of this uh, walk that I've done you with you today is on a long distance path known as the Wessex Ridgeway. Um, you can find more details about the Wessex Ridgeway on our website www.footpath-holidays.com and also have a look at our West Wiltshire self-guided walks because this one's on there too. Something to think about when the crisis is over. So if you're out to capture one of these hill forts, the bit you aim for is not the steep bit, but the gateway, which of course is where all the defenders would put their best men and most of their men. So uh, there you are, next time you want to besiege an Iron Age hill fort, look for the gate. And while we do a panorama, we're looking for, looking across to just beyond the, the ridge of hills there is the deserted village of Imber, which the uh, MOD took away from the locals and uh, promised to give it back at the end of World War II. And it's still a ghost town. I mean, you can go out there at Easter and Christmas and then look across, look at this lovely thin soil full of chalk. Uh, so very easily worked with primitive implements, which is why early man farmed up here. Uh, also, uh, it's not good for too many crops, but it's very good for cereal. And barley is a cereal. And barley, as we know, is a principal component of that wonderful product, beer, and uh, an awful lot of uh, big Wiltshire brewing families, like the Arkells and the Wadsworths were known as the Barley Barons because they bought their own farms so they could grow their own barley and cut out the middle one. And now we just spin round to have a look down into the Wiley Valley down at the village of Norton Bavent. As we walk across this uh, ploughed field up in the, uh, the, the chalky area, um, you'll see these stones that are poking through. They come up every year as regular as clockwork with the plough and they are flint. Where you find chalk, you find flint. So chalk is a, a load of crushed sea creatures and the flint, which has a black core, is uh, the uh, compressed brains and eyes of those crustaceans. So that's a lot of them. But the reason that flint is significant is because it sharpens to a fantastically pointy um, end or a, a really, really good edge. And when you're chasing deer and, and hunting for your sustenance and having to skin things, then that's, uh, that's incredibly important, which made this whole area incredibly important during the Stone Age. It's a lovely typical piece of flint with its black 
middle and that would be flaked off to make sure. And here's our last hill, uh, Copley Hill. Show you a nice little, what we call in this country, a kissing gate, because if you both try and get through it at the same time, you'll be left with nothing to do but kiss. You'll be jammed. Um, let's look across straight ahead of you. Of us. Past the signpost, you'll see some uh, uneven ground. And that's probably the oldest thing we're going to look at today, because uh, that is the remains of a flint quarry, because by the Neolithic, the New Stone Age, we were pretty industrial in the, uh, the production of our flint. In fact, over in Norfolk, another chalky area, um, what's known as Grimes Graves, are just massive flint mines. So flint was king. And then all of a sudden, it wasn't. Um, at around about 3000 BCE, in came people from Europe who knew about metal, um, and they had copper with them. Um, and so Europe had had a long copper age. We hadn't had a copper age, uh, but we didn't have a copper age for long here because as soon as they found tin in Cornwall and they found that they could alloy tin and bronze, uh, tin and copper, we had the bronze age. But that doesn't mean that uh, they weren't still producing flint here into the early Bronze Age, because if you were to transplant it now, they weren't all so aspirational then, and the metal was difficult to get. Just pan around while I'm telling you this into the lovely Wiley Valley. Um, so if they were as aspirational as us, then they'd probably have been going to Waitrose and Marks and Spencers to get their bronze, and Little and Aldi would have been doing a cheap sell-off on flint. But flint was still uh, considerably better for arrows than, say, copper and bronze was far too precious to go sticking in arrows and then shooting them away so uh, flint still had a place but uh, the bronze age meant that the people that came in the bronze age also farmed and, and I've shown you the thin soils up here so just have a have a look at the soil here lovely and thin uh, easily worked with primitive implements but now look at that lovely dark soil down in the valley there's a lot of clay in that, and they wouldn't have been farming that back in prehistoric times because they just wouldn't have had the implements to work it. It would have been far too difficult for them. So uh, up here they would have stayed. Uh, and they did right through into the Iron Age until the Romans came. Um, and so uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's walk. I'm gonna head down the hill there because my house is just in that little cluster of houses. Um, sadly, we don't have any beer in the fridge, but a cup of tea will do the job. Bye.